evening and welcome to WMLT News. I'm Kelsey Spurlock. And I'm Angie Coons. Serial killer Rodney Alcala has finally received a death sentence 30 years after his first conviction. Rodney Alcala was tried twice in 1980 for the same case being the murder of a 12-year-old girl, but the case was overturned on appeal. He was then brought back for the murders of four women in the Los Angeles County area. Alcala has received his final conviction of five counts of first-degree murder, have left him with a death sentence. Authorities have now released more than 100 photos of women found in Alcala's possession. Hopefully, this will link him to other unsolved murders around the country. Ford Motor Company wants to remain on top in the U.S. police car market. Ford revealed its new police interceptor sedan Friday. Some things that the police car features is anti-stab plates built into the front seats to protect occupants from attacks and bulletproof suicide doors. It's built to withstand a 75 mile per hour rear crash. The car, based on the Ford Taurus, will replace the Crown Victoria-based cruiser at the end of 2011. This past weekend, the student-led chapter of the United Way hosted an Easter egg hunt in Athens Park. All in attendance got the chance to play games, participate in a read-along with the Easter Bunny, and of course, search for those elusive eggs on a beautiful day near Campus Beautiful. The annual career fair was held in the ballroom. I was there for more. Concord's fourth annual career fair was held on Thursday, March 25th. The event was planned and promoted by the Recreation and Tourism 415 class. It was welcome to all students and included not only professional job opportunities, but also summer jobs and several types of internships. The attending businesses were both local and national. There were several West Virginia State Parks and even tables for Walt Disney World and the U.S. Army Corps. Dr. Susan Williams, who led the RTM class in organizing the event, was very pleased with the results. It's always been open to freshmen through senior in every academic arena, but as we're growing in popularity, um, we have more quality and more diverse people coming to offer jobs. The turnout was phenomenal. It more than doubled in the student body from last year. And in fact, in previous years, we've noticed that we felt it was a weakness that the students didn't come. Rudy Raines, a former Concord broadcasting student, was at the fair with Fox 11 from Charleston. Career fair is great, especially at Concord. You know, you have so many options to look at. I know when I was here, I'd always come check it out. And because there are so many options, there are a lot of different places you can look. You, know, you have some specific areas where you can go to. So, you know, come in with one thing in particular in your mind. You can go directly to that table. Everyone's always really willing to help. After working endlessly all semester with Dr. Williams, the students pulled off quite a successful job fair and are in high hopes for next year's attendance. I think my students did an absolute wonderful job. The vendors were very pleased, and so uh, we couldn't ask for a better performance on their part. Uh, we, I think we were very, very pleased with the number of vendors who showed up, and we were certainly very, very pleased with the number of students who came out. Reporting from Concord for WMLT, I'm Angie Coons. Concord's Division of Languages and Literature hosted the first annual Spanish Film Festival last week. The highlight of the festival was guest speaker Dr. Alberto Villamondos, who came to the state room to speak about the history of Spanish films and how they are interpreted today. The films were shown at 7.30 each evening, some of which offered extra credit in language or culture classes. The movies and guest speaker attracted several students who were interested in learning about diversity. The film festival celebrates the new Spanish major, now available at Concord, and it was arranged by the Spanish Club, led by Dr. Matthew Edwards. Stay tuned after the break for the latest movie reviews with Ticket or Leave It. And the WMLT Sports News with Rachel Lucas.
Concord got its very own Final Four. No, not basketball. A committee in charge of choosing Concord's new Vice President and Academic Dean is now down to the Final Four candidates out of 60 applicants. Dr. John David Smith, a familiar face on campus, is applying for the job. Two of the other candidates, Dr. LaVon Neal and Dr. Eric Yi Ting Lee, have both met with classified and non-classified staff, as well as faculty and students in an effort to introduce themselves and discuss their background or any plans they have for Concord. The other candidate, Dr. Steven Saul, will have his meeting within the next few days. The job recipient will be announced in the weeks to come. In other news, SGA held a meeting this past Monday in the state room to address students' concern with transparency in the student body and whether or not students are being informed of everything that's going on at SGA's meetings. However, no one showed up. That's it for this week's Concord Minute. Back to you guys. Now we'll send it over to Jamie Lee Reichert for this week's Ticket or Leave It. Thanks guys. A new movie that just came out is Hot Tub Time Machine. This is a must-see movie. After one crazy night at a ski resort, Adam, played by John Cusack, and his three other friends, Lou, played by Rob Courtney, Nick, played by Craig Robinson, and Jacob, played by Clark Duke, find themselves in the year eight, 1986, where they try to change the fate of their futures. One will find a new love, one will learn to stand up for himself with the girls, one will get some game, and one will make sure he still exists. This movie is filled with hilarious moments that you don't want to miss. I recommend you going to see this new movie. Another movie that just came out from the same studio that brought you Shrek, Madagascar, and Kung Fu Panda, it's How to Train Your Dragon 3D. This movie is set in a fantasy world of Vikings and wild dragons. It tells the story of Hiccup, a Viking teen who doesn't quite fit in with his tribe's force-seeking tradition of heroic dragon slayers. Hiccup's world changes when he meets a dragon that challenges him and his fellow Vikings to see the world from a completely different point of view. This movie is one of the best animated movies of 2010. It's action-packed and filled with comedy and friendship. You are definitely going to want to see this. For more information on new movies, go to Fandango.com. That's it for Ticket or Leave It. Back to you at the desk. Now for the latest in this week's sports, we have Rachel Lucas. Welcome to this week's CU Sports. I'm Rachel Lucas. Bad weather has forced a postponement of the non-conference game between Concord and Bluefield College, originally scheduled for Tuesday, March 30th. Instead, the game will be played on Monday, April 12th at Bowen Field in Bluefield, West Virginia. First pitch is at 7 o'clock p.m. Meanwhile, Concord's WVIAC series with Shepard this week has moved up one day. Concord's Devin Smith is the latest West Virginia Intercollegiate Athletic Conference Player of the Week. The sophomore outfielder from Withfield, Virginia helped the Mountain Lions go 5-0 last week by hitting a 667 with a remarkable 19 RBIs. Hitting one home run, seven doubles while scoring six runs, Smith is Concord's second player of the week this season. Grayson Schramm shared the honor last week. Also previously receiving this honor, CU's Chaston Akers was a finalist for the Pitcher of the Week after throwing a complete Game 3 hitter and a 10-1 win over Bluefield State on March 28th. Concord's men's golf team stands at 8th place out of 20 teams after the first round of the North Alabama Spring Classic on Monday, March 29th. Junior Emmanuel Charmat and freshman Juan Isberg posted the Mountain Lions' top scores on Monday. Each shot a 77 on the par 72 at the Robert Trent Jones Design Fighting Joe Course in Muscle Shots, Alabama. The Concord duo is tied for 18th in the individual standings. Concord's women's golf team posted an 11th place finish in the 21-team Northern Kentucky Spring Invitational on Saturday and Sunday, March 27th and 28th. Vivian garcia Ferro paced the Lady Lions by finishing tied for 10th place. The freshman carded a two-day total of 154 at the par 72, Perry Park Golf Club in Perry Park, Kentucky. Concord fans have tuned into the Classic Rock 102 The River, WMT 102.3 FM, for broadcast coverage of Mountain Line Sports. Sports fans can expect a change for the better, however. Southern Communication, which owns and operates WMTD FM, has announced the station is flipping its format. Starting at 12 p.m. on Monday, March 29th, 
WMTD-FM will become an all-sports station and join the ESPN radio network. WMTD will be dubbed The Ticket. Its revamped website will be www.theticket102.3.com. For more information on sports at Concord, check out www.cumountainlines.com. That's all for Concord Sports. I'm Rachel Lucas. The All Together Arts Week for Mercer County started last week. Jonathan Klein has more. I'm walking. Well, more like a march. This week, Mercer County celebrates the second annual All Together Arts Week. All Together Arts Week is a week-long celebration of local artists and arts organizations. This year, Mercer County was chosen as one of the top five certified arts communities by the West Virginia Division of Culture and History due in part to events like Arts Week. I had the opportunity on Monday night to attend the Writer's Coffee Clash at the Windhorse Hilling Arts Center. This is where local poets and artists can gather and share their work. According to local artist Katie Buchanan, it's a great opportunity to meet people. And it's really been a way for me to get to know Bluefield, get to know Princeton, Mercer County, to get to meet people, to know what kind of opportunities are available here. And it's amazing to me what a, an exciting place Mercer County is. Not only is it a great way to meet people, but it's also a great way to get the community involved. Altogether, Arts Week planner Lori McKinney would love to see more people get involved in the events around Mercer County. The creative community is already so on board and it's fantastic that we're all working on this together. I'd like to see the public come out to uh, participate in each of the events more. And that's one of the goals of All Together Arts Week is to raise awareness. So whether you're an artist or just someone who appreciates art, Mercer County is the place to be this week. For WMLT, I'm Jonathan Klein in Bluefield. For most college students, life can go by fast. In the case of this Concord student, life is going by faster than usual. Wes McKinney has more. Freshman Shawnee Carnett enjoys the Concord student lifestyle like everyone else. She enjoys hiking, shopping, swimming, and wants to be a physical education teacher. You know, her work on the, on the, on the track carries over into the classroom, um, so she's going to be successful at, no matter what she does. Not all Concord students are like Shawnee Carnett. The freshman has been smashing the track and field record book along with setting a national mark for the 800 meter run. Going into college, owning all these records is such a good feeling because in high school I owned a few and I thought it would be really, really hard and I've worked hard all year since cross and, and I just took one record at a time and I'm a really good coach. It's been a good experience. Coach Cox is very optimistic about the freshman's potential. Um, she, she's going to be, um, and I, to, I told her she's going to be the, one of the first the first female in the uh, uh, Hall of Fame here for track and field at Concord University. Um, but she's come a long way already in a short time, so I think if she just keeps believing um, in what we're doing. No matter how fast she runs and how many records she breaks, Shawnee Carnell will always be a Concord student, living life in the fast lane. For WMLT, I'm Wes McKinney in Athens. For me and the whole WMLT crew, Thank you for joining us again tonight. I'm Angie Coons. And make sure you tune back in in two weeks for more WMLT news. I'm Kelsey Spurlock.